Hi everybody, it's Kathy, and today I want to talk about what I wore on my Alaska cruise. I recently returned from an inside passage on the Holland America Koningsdam cruise ship. I hosted a group of 10 people. That was my first time ever like taking any more than four people on a trip, but all went well. So I thought I would share the outfits that I wore and talk a little bit about each stop that we made. It was a seven day inside passage cruise round trip out of Vancouver, which is great because I live in Ontario. So it was just a quick five hour flight to uh, hop on the cruise ship. I think that you're gonna be a little surprised in how few clothing pieces that I actually ended up wearing. Now, typically when I travel, I like to go carry on only because we're usually going to Europe or somewhere where we have to lug our own suitcases. I have had my suitcase get misplaced at the start of a vacation once. It is a horrible feeling. So now whenever we can do carry on only that's what we like to do however we checked a bag for Alaska because everybody else in the group was taking a check suitcase so I figured oh well we might as well too we still have to go to the carousel and wait for their bags no issues got our bags but what I found was I've gotten good at making do with less clothing as I travel so actually I could have just did carry on only if I wanted to so I did find on the Alaska cruise I did this cruise I think it was 14 years ago and I found that this cruise was very laid back. They certainly were not strict on their dress code. And this was either my 19th or 20th cruise. I've been cruising, I think for the last 25 years. Cruising has changed so much. I still like to cruise, but I don't enjoy it as much as I once did. That can be another video, but that's just, you know, my feeling because I don't like some of the changes that have been made. I always felt that I was dressed appropriately. I knew going into this that we would not be going to the dining room every night for dinner because what we like to do is we like to go to the dining room for breakfast and lunch and we like to have our main meal like our largest meal at lunch and then just something light for dinner so lots of times you know we'll go to the burger joint pizza place the Lido we did go to the dining room two out of the seven nights for dinner with the group the rest of the time we were just on our own because you're coming and going we spend a lot of time out on the balcony you know watching the scenery looking for whales, looking for wildlife. So we were there the first week of July. We had amazing weather. It didn't rain once. The sun was out every day, except for the final day when we were sailing back to Vancouver. In the morning, we had some fog, but it cleared up. It was literally between 80 and 82 Fahrenheit, you know, in port, except for when we were uh, out on the excursion for Tracy Arm Fjord, where you're close to the glaciers. You certainly needed mitts, hat, and a parka. I took two coats with me. One is this this athletic parka that I bought last year. This is a great parka. I was so glad that I took it. It's very packable. It's not a heavy parka, but it keeps you warm. Say it's minus 35. Snowing and blowing is probably not best, you know, to go out for very long. Uh, with this parka, you might need a heavier parka. Certainly for, you know, our winters when you're in and out of your car, in and out of the mall for travel, it is perfect. I like that it is a longer length. The waist cinches in. It has toggles on the inside. You can make the waist bigger or smaller. I have it in black. I'm not sure if it's in other colors. I like that it's longer. I like that it has a hood and it kept me warm. I also bought this fleece from Amazon. It's part of their Amazon Essentials and I wore this most of the time. Uh, some days I actually wore the fleece under the parka because like I said when we were on our excursions near the, the glaciers it was quite cold so I'm glad that I had both pieces. But whenever you spend the day like in a national park we went to Glacier Bay. The captain opens the bow of the ship up and you're allowed to go to the bow you know throughout the day they do serve pea soup and they also had hot chocolate and you can also get coffee that'll help warm you up as well we spent a lot of time out at the bow but then most of the day we spent just on our balcony and they do have nice blankets in your room uh, when you're on the Alaska cruise wool blankets that you can put on and uh, keep yourself nice and toasty because you don't want to miss the scenery that's why you go on an Alaskan cruise because it's just it's amazing it is such a wonderful wonderful cruise. I loved it. It was, it was really great. Two other things I want to mention before I get into my outfits, because I think they're important and you need to know, hear about these. Take binoculars. You're going to need binoculars. We took two pair. We took a large pair and then I just bought this little pair for travel. 
They were perfect. I think it's 10 by 25 magnification. They're so lightweight. I wore them around my neck all day when I was sitting out on the uh, balcony. And if we thought that we saw a whale, I could just pop them on. And it was great. Very, very handy. And now these are going to stay in my suitcase because I'm going to take them with me everywhere I travel because they're so lightweight and handy to have. I also want to mention this. I decided on this cruise that I was going to really be in the moment and enjoy the cruise because I think so often we're trying to capture the perfect moment on our cell phone or on our camera and really if you try and get the perfect picture of a whale, you're gonna miss the experience because they're going by, you're going the opposite way, and in a minute, they're gone. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm gonna take some pictures, but if I see wildlife, I'm gonna just take the time and I'm gonna enjoy it with my own eyes. Because the picture isn't that great unless you're a great photographer and you're lucky enough to see like a humpback whale breaching, which we never saw, but we saw some pretty cool wildlife that I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. So just enjoy the moment. And I also forgot to mention I took two pair of shoes with me. I took my slip-on runners that I wore throughout the day and I took a pair of dressier loafers for the nights that we went to the dining room. I also packed my winter boot and some sandals because I thought I was going to go to the hot tub in the pool. I did not. <laughs> that place was always full with kids so we avoided the pool area. I didn't need my winter boots. You really don't have to take everything plus the kitchen sink whenever you're traveling. So now let's get into the cruise itinerary and what I wore every day. So our travel day was Thursday, June 30th, and we flew Ottawa to Vancouver, and it's a little over a five-hour flight. We flew with Air Canada, no issues whatsoever, landed in Vancouver. Our flight took off in Ottawa at 7 a.m. I think we got to Vancouver about 9.20 a.m. because they're three hours behind us. I live in Ontario. I had arranged for transportation for the group through Holland America. Uh, not impressed. <laughs> Didn't uh, start off on a very good foot but we did get to the hotel we booked one night at the pan pacific hotel it's right at canada place right where the cruise ship docks and where you get on beautiful beautiful hotel this was the eve of canada day say we celebrate july 1st it was so so busy i think the hotel was full capacity they were setting up outside for their Canada Day celebrations, but the hotel was so quiet. Never heard a peep, had a great sleep. So whenever I travel, I need to be comfortable. I cannot stand, you know, being on a long flight and wearing tight jeans or what have you. So what I wore were my Zella joggers, an Athleta Breezy tee. I've Love that t-shirt. And I had my Vionic slip-on runners. I didn't bother with a sweater because the plane was warm enough. I didn't need one. But I did put a sweater in my leather tote that stays at my feet on the plane. And the one that I took, I think, was from Talbots. It had a hood. I decided to wear this because I knew the minute that we landed at the hotel, we were heading out to the Capilano Suspension Bridge Park. I knew that we were going to be, you know, climbing trees and on suspension bridges. Vancouver, I expected it would be a little cooler because they are on the coast. I thought, you know, up in the trees it would be cooler. Between 5 and maybe 8 degrees cooler than what it would be in Ontario. But I was sufficiently dressed in my joggers. A few people had shorts on, but I just didn't want to be bothered changing because, you know, after you've been on a plane, you just want to take a shower. So I knew we'd be, you know, sweating on the suspension bridge. If you've never been on a suspension bridge, I highly recommend challenging yourself and going on one. I first did this, well, on our first cruise 14 years ago on terrified of heights. And it was scarier this time just simply because the bridge was jam-packed with people as you can see in the photos. I felt like there was just too many people on the bridge to enjoy the experience. Some people were just acting like fools and running up and down on it. And the bridge was like swinging like this. And for people that are afraid of heights, I mean, it can be a bit traumatic. I did not enjoy my experience this time. Certainly not as much as the first time that I did it. However, I always like to challenge myself and do new things because I feel that if I don't challenge myself, you never really grow. I'm done with the suspension park. I don't need to go back there next time I think we'll do the tram again where you can uh, go up to Grouse Mountain and see beautiful Vancouver and the Pacific Ocean. I just, I love the West Coast of Canada. It is so, so beautiful. So that was our one excursion. Like we were there, I think for about three, four hours. And by the time we got back, we just had a quick bite to eat, showered and went to bed because it had been a long day. We had been up since uh, 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it would be like 1 a.m. Pacific. 
So on embarkation day, July 1st, the ship was literally just docked right outside our hotel. We went outside early in the morning, watched the captain back the ship in, watched them do the docking process, people coming off. Between 10 and 10.30, got the group together. We made our way down to Canada Place, the where the cruise ship terminal is. Literally took the elevator down. We started the boarding process, which went very smoothly. We were on the ship, I think, by 11.30. Got everybody to their rooms, and then I said, we're going to the dining room for lunch. So there was just four of us that went to the dining room. The others wanted to go explore the ship. For some of them, it was their very first cruise. So we had a nice, peaceful lunch in the dining room, and then we went back to our room our luggage was there unpacked got settled in and uh, watched the safety video and then went on deck for the sail away party so for embarkation day i was wearing my favorite Talbot's washed linen shorts. I absolutely love them. And I was wearing a t-shirt from Talbot's that had buttons in the back. If these are both still available, I will link them below this video and in the first pinned comment. I also had on my only runners that I brought, the, those Vionic slip-on shoes. And it was a really warm day, like really warm. I think I got a sunburn that day. I always use my Monos Carry On Plus suitcase, even though we checked a bag. I just like to put an outfit for myself or my husband in the Monos suitcase, just in case, you know, our luggage will get delayed. Uh, I also have my coach tote, which I love to carry. That stays at my feet. I use it as my purse and it has like my headphones, our iPads, documents, all those things. It's never out of my sight. So I wore that for the rest of the day because for dinner, uh, we just went to the Lido and I think I had pizza or something. So it was just a very laid back casual day. So our first full day was a cruising day, full day cruising at sea and we were cruising. They renamed the passage but I have known it as the Charlotte Islands. It is some of the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life. It is just so so pretty and a lot of times you're very close to land and I never knew Vancouver Island was as big as it is. It's a huge huge island and it's so pretty. I just felt such pride in my country. Canada truly is a gorgeous, gorgeous country and it was just so nice to be able to see a part of it that typically I wouldn't see living in Ontario. Ontario is very different. I mean, we have a lot of concrete around us, but out in BC, if I could move there, I would. I, I just, I fell in love with the West Coast. I, I always have loved the West Coast. So because we were going to be out on deck looking for whales, I wore my my Talbot's Everywhere pants. I have worn these pants to death. You know I wear them a lot, a lot uh, since I have bought them last winter. They're so comfortable. They're very casual, but again, they can be dressed up. And whenever I'm buying clothing, that's what I look for. Like, can I wear this piece of clothing more than one way? And that's my, kind of my philosophy. Like, I like investing in good quality pieces and have less clothes than, you know, having a bunch of clothes. That's one of my philosophies. Philosophies. And I also took my Talbot's hooded athletic jacket uh, in indigo blue because whenever I buy from Talbot's, I usually always go with indigo blue so they, you know, I can mix and match. That's one of the great things about Talbot's. And again, keeping it casual, my Vionic slip on runners. So that night, we just went to the burger joint for dinner. So we ate outside, watching the scenery. So we didn't change at all. And most people were, you know, very casual and a lot of people were eating outside too because we saw some whales. I was sitting out on the balcony, I was all alone and I was like looking way out for whales and I heard this noise and I got up and I looked down and literally like not too far from our balcony, there was a huge humpback whale and I heard her breathe and oh my gosh, I felt so privileged to hear that. It really touched me uh, to be that close to such a majestic creature. So I tried to snap a video and I'm showing you as the only footage that I got. But I, after that, I said to myself, if I see another whale, I'm just going to watch it. Like I can always get a picture online somewhere if I want to put it with my photo album. But how often do you get to hear a humpback whale breathe? It was such a magical moment. I sadly did not get to see a lot of whales. My sister did. They basically lived on their deck 24 seven. She was so excited. She was out, you know, at three in the morning looking for whales. So they saw a lot more whales than I did, but oh my gosh, what a treat. 
So on the Monday, we were in Juneau, but we got off the ship before the ship uh, went on to Juneau. The captain stopped the ship. We got on a catamaran just at the uh, inlet of Tracy Arm Fjord. And that was, I think, a six hour excursion. And that was a very nice excursion. Tracy Arm Fjord is absolutely gorgeous. You want to dress extremely warm whenever you go there. My only complaint is they had oversold the catamaran. I think there was 150 people on this catamaran. There wasn't enough seats for everybody and it was really annoying because a lot of people were standing outside probably because they didn't have anywhere else to be blocking our view with the people that were sitting inside. I was not happy about this because that excursion ended up costing me $750 for my husband and I. So I let Holland America know about it. I was not impressed. We did see a lot of little seals on like floating little icebergs. I saw lots of little icebergs, saw a couple of glaciers. They were beautiful and it was just fascinating to hear the story from the tour director how like years and years ago where we were actually sailing once would have been the glacier and how much it's receded over you know hundreds and thousands of years. So that was super cool. Beautiful scenery. The only wildlife we saw in there were the seals and a few seabirds. So that day I wanted to make sure that I was dressed really well and so that I'd be warm and toasty. So I I was wearing the Spanx Air Essentials tapered pants and then I had a long sleeve Zella t-shirt on and then I had my Spanx contour jacket on. And I have found dupes for the Spanx pants and jacket and I will link them below underneath the link for the Spanx original. And I was also wearing a toque that I bought from my friend Frances, a fellow YouTuber. Frances is a great knitter. She has a company called Nora's Knits where she does hats and a lot of other stuff. She's super gifted and her too kept me nice and toasty. I was not feeling well on this excursion. I had a migraine. It was really bad and actually whenever we got back to the ship I ended up laying down and I fell asleep for two and a half hours. That's something that I never do. So we did not dress and go to the dining room for dinner. We just went and had pizza by the pool and I think I was in bed by seven. So sadly for part of the trip I did have a migraine. So on the Tuesday which was July 4th we we were in Skagway. We went on their uh, train that they have. It's called, I think, the White Pass Rail Excursion. We actually got the tickets for free because they had a bonus on when we booked the cruise last November. So I wasn't sure what to expect, but I'm glad that I dressed warm because you're going through the mountains, you're going through the bush, and it is chilly because people are going in and out of the car. You can go to the back of the car to take photos. So we were seated near the back, so it did get cold. They had, I think, a wood stove at the front of every car. That's how they heated the car. It was kind of cool. And to think that they built this railway through the mountains like years ago and wow, like it, it's just mind blowing how they uh, would have constructed this with the equipment. You think about, you know, what we have today and what they would have had back then. Very, very impressed. So again, I wore my Spanx Air Essential pants, my Spanx contour jacket, another long sleeve uh, t-shirt. I had the navy fleece jacket on and my bionic runners. I did not take my parka. I just wore the fleece and I was fine. Uh, for dinner, we went to the dining room that evening. I kept the Spanx tapered pants on. I switched out the runners for my loafers that I bought last fall from Talbot's. For the top, I was just wearing a pink blouse that I bought at Talbot's last fall. And then I was carrying my little Michael Kors uh, crossbody bag that I take with me whenever I cruise. It's just big enough, you know, to hold my phone, maybe some Kleenex, my key to the room, stuff like that. So on Wednesday, which was July 5th, we were in Glacier Bay. And Glacier Bay is a national park, so you get a ranger come on board. And they usually get on board the ship pretty early in the morning, and then they get off the ship about 3, 3.30. And throughout the day, he will have talks, and he will come over the PA system and explain about the glacier that you park in front. And it's kind of cool. I think we went to two glaciers. What happens is the captain just like idles the ship, and then he basically basically gently just maneuvers the ship 360 degrees so everybody gets a chance to see the glacier. It was absolutely gorgeous that day. So, so beautiful. And we spent all day outside and I was glad because I wore my parka that day. We spent most of the day on our balcony or at the bow of the ship. It was breathtaking. We got so much fresh air that day. Now, we didn't see much wildlife other than little seals and some seabirds. This is what I wore 
wore. I had my Talbot's Everyday Stretch leggings on. I love those leggings. They're so comfortable. Talbot's long sleeve, one of their um, Pima t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts. I had on my Amazon Essentials fleece. And then whenever I was outside, I had my parka on. And that kept me warm with my toque, my mitts. And my binoculars lived around my neck all day because we were looking for wildlife. But it was so fun to see the little seals. And oh, they were funny. And then like seagulls fighting with the seals trying to get you know what the seal had caught to eat and it was just a fun day and so so beautiful. So on the Thursday we were in Ketchikan and that was July 6th. So my husband and I decided to go on a forest walk and we went to the Tongass National Park and it was a guided forest walk through the bush. It lasted about an hour and we were in a group of eight people which was nice you know it wasn't too big. The forest was beautiful as you can see from the pictures just absolutely lovely and there were bears around so <laughs> there was no way I was going in a forest without a guide and somebody that had bear spray or a gun or something like I've seen bears before but never that close to them so once we stepped in the forest like there was evidence that there was certainly a bear around because there was fresh poop and also she talked about how she showed us where a bear will stand on their back feet and then they'll mark the trees almost like marking their territory and you can see where he just took his nails and just like ripped into the tree the trees were beautiful. We saw some of those really, really big, oh, I forget what they're called. They're, they're huge trees. We saw where some of the bears had made a den in some tree trunks. She showed us where the bears, you know, would go and eat the berries. We did see two bears, but thankfully they weren't terribly close to us. The first bear that I saw, I got a little bit ahead of the group, but not too far ahead. We were going to step out onto this wooden boardwalk that was over a bit of a marshy area. And I just turned turned and I saw a bear and he was so so cute. He had a salmon in his mouth. He had just caught a salmon and I wanted to get his picture and the person behind me just screamed bam! and of course the bear took off like lightning but she explained to us this little river or stream that goes through where we were walking the salmon come there to spawn in the summer and I didn't know that once a salmon spawns they die and they die like a really terrible death like they suffer their teeth fall out and they just basically starve to death so in a way the bears are kind of helping them along but this bear was adorable I wish I could have got his picture he had the cutest face and it was so cute with the salmon and he looked more scared scared, you know, seeing us than we were of seeing him. What an adrenaline rush. So we stayed there, you know, for about 10, 15 minutes, hoping the bear would come back. He didn't. But then we saw another bear, which I'm showing you in this video. He was, you know, far enough away from us. I had to zoom in, but he was looking for salmon too. But that was the last we saw of him. And that was unfortunately the only bears that we did see. So my goal for the trip was I wanted to see a bear. I wanted to see a humpback whale and I wanted to see an orca. For Ketchikan, it was so so warm that day. I wore my Talbot's everyday stretch leggings again, just a t-shirt, a short sleeve t-shirt, and just the hooded zip jacket. I took my fleece with me and I wore it a bit just because I didn't want to carry it, but I really didn't need it. That's how warm it was. And then I had my Bagalini crossbody travel purse that I use. Uh, Ketchikan, a super cute little town. It's so picturesque and so so beautiful. So on July 7th, which was the last Last full day of the cruise we were sailing back to Vancouver and for half of the day we couldn't see anything it was very very foggy so you know most of the morning all we could hear were like ship horns going off because we had a princess ship uh, traveling with us and we were busy that day packing and getting ready to leave the next day so it was pretty low-key and the last day of a cruise usually is because they know people are preparing to leave the next day for that day I wore my Spanx tapered pants I had this dressier Talbot's front twist sleeve top on and then I was wearing my Spanx contoured jacket. I wore the Spanx pants and jacket so many times like when I love something I love it. For dinner that night like we just spent the rest of our day just sitting on our balcony because once the fog lifted we could see uh, some of Vancouver Island. Oh my goodness so so beautiful absolutely breathtaking. So for dinner that night we went with my sister her husband my nephew and his girlfriend and we went to the Lido for dinner and then my daughter and her boy 
boyfriend, I think, somewhere else. And then the other couple were traveling with us. They went to the dining room. Just had a really low-key day. And then that evening, I was just about to go in and take my shower. And I saw a pod of four orca whales. What a magical experience. I have never seen an orca out in the wild, like where they belong. It was just so magical to see them. So yeah, I think it was a mother and three little ones. They look so different than a humpback whale. It really was breathtaking and I felt so privileged to see this. We only saw that one pod, but we went to bed and my sisters, they stayed up a lot later than we did because they wanted to, you know, see as much as they could. They were excited it was their first cruise and they said that they saw some more. So, oh my gosh, it was just, it was magical. I was so happy. I saw scenery. I saw the wildlife. And if you ever get the chance to go on an inside passage cruise to Alaska, if you like nature and you like scenery, it's really, really, really beautiful. And it's a different vibe than say going on a Caribbean cruise. Totally, totally different vibe. So for our travel day home, I wore my Spanx tapered pants again, a Talbot's puff sleeve top, and I had my Spanx contour jacket just in case I was, you know, cold on the plane because sometimes I can get cold, and my Vionic slip-ons. I wore those Spanx pants at least three or four times. It just goes to show you I didn't wear probably about a third of the clothes that I took. It really proved to me that I find whenever I am at home, I tend to wear the same clothes most of the time because we have a very simple life. I mean, we're not socializing a lot. We're not going out a lot. That's just who we are. We're very like casual people. You may like to dress up in a different outfit a couple of times a day and that that's fine. Your vacation is what you make of it. But my point is you can do carry on only or take a minimal amount of clothes. You can always, you know, get them laundered on the ship. I know Princess has laundromats on every second floor. You can do your own laundry. So I've done it before when I've done like a 14 day cruise. You can buy Fabrice for clothes. You know, just spritz your clothes if you're afraid of them not being fresh. Hang them up in the bathroom, let the steam get to them whenever you're showering. You don't need a lot of clothes to get by. We think that we do and I think that we panic when we're packing for a trip. And I learned that earlier this year when I went to Maui, like literally I, I took a carry on and I you know could have taken even a smaller carry on bag. So I hope that you enjoyed my little uh, recap about my trip. I had planned on doing a vlog. I had planned on doing my outfit things differently. I was sick four out of the eight days with a horrible migraine. I didn't feel like doing anything other than just the basic things that I had to do and try and enjoy my trip as much as I can. I hope you enjoyed my trip and if you want to see my capsule wardrobe that I took to Maui, I'll link that video here and I can meet you over at that video. Thanks for watching. Bye.